this video will show you my Beam setup. I've been using Beam for more than 10 years for web development and I just love to work with Beam. I keep learning new tricks even after so many years and I constantly tweak my config to improve my development experience. Right now I'm using Mac Beam version 8 and I will be using a, a little app to show the keys I'm typing so you will see the keys in the bottom right. If you see this little icon, this is the escape key. All right, um, so let's start by showing you a config file for my plugins. Uh, I have this little file called binrc.bundles and that is, that is included by binrc. And this is what I have all the plugins that I, that I use. Um, basically, I use Beam Plug uh, for installing my plugins. I was using Bundle before, but I decided to switch to Beam Plug because of this. I have uh, in Beam in Beam Plug you can run post scripts. So, for example, here this plugin requires you to install dependencies with jar or npm. So, yeah, some plugins uh, have this once install requirements so it's easier if you just keep this in the config for the for the plugins that than doing that manually so another plugin that i use is nurtry this is a file navigator so here you can see all the files in the project and you can basically browse the files like any other in like any other editor and you and also I have some other uh, plugins to improve the nurture experience uh, I have this plugin that shows these icons next to the files and I have some other plugins for for git status and things like that all right so another plugin that i like to use is uh, ultisnips ultisnips is the one that i use for snippets so for example i use this snippet for javascript all the time so it will save you some time if you wanna just um, create this little uh, code snippet so this will save you some typing all right, um, another plugin I use is called Bean and Impair. This one lets you move blocks of code like this. Um, so I, I think it's kind of cool. If it's, instead of doing that, you could do this uh, like cut and paste. Another plugin that I use is Auto Pairs. This one basically lets you close uh, brackets um, parentheses like in this case and yeah that's basically that it's pretty simple um, I think it's pretty helpful I have uh, the control P plugin which is the one that lets me do a fuzzy search in the project so I can basically just type control P and start searching things here and open the files if I need Okay, that's fuzzy search. Uh, I also have a plugin to comment code. Uh, it's called tcomment. So I can type GC and this code will be commented or GCC and we will comment just one. And for my theme, right now I'm using Groovebox in this, this is what you see here. But I usually prefer to use uh, like themes. Um, it's easier for me to read when the theme is basically with a ba uh, white background. And I have various plugins for syntax highlighting for uh, different programming languages like JavaScript, like uh, PHP. Uh, I have uh, something for, especially for Blade or for Twig. So. Uh, all those are in my config if you case uh, you're interested in checking them for code formatting I'm using Prettier here for JavaScript so let's say I move these lines here and I save them then basically Prettier will fix that for me and I have the same for uh, PHP but not with but not with Prairie but with with PHP CS fixer so 
if I save something, PHP CX Fixer will fix the code for me. And I, I have uh, different rules per project. So it's not like uh, the same for all of them. But, bas but basically I use the Symfony rules. Another plugin I've been using is called COC. It's uh, a command of conquer. And this one gives you some kind of linting um, or some different functionality. So you can see the definition of the functions. For example, if I type here GD, I can go to the definition of this function. If I type control O, I can go back. I can also see the definition in, in a little pop-up. So it can, it's kind of helpful if you want to see the parameters for a function or, or things like that. Um, you can actually, you can also go to the definition. I can type leader R end and I can rename this function and it will update also the other files related to this function. So if I go back to the files, I can see this is now called search2 and it's also imported as search2. Search so, and it's, it's pretty helpful in my opinion. And the last plugin I want to mention is the one to show these little symbols here at the left of the numbers column. Here I can see that I added something. Um, it basically compares this to, to Git. Uh, so it shows me that I added some 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 code in this line, and uh, it, yeah, it shows me if I remove code or if I add code and things like that. So it's kind of helpful to to see this in the in the code, or is or you can go to the terminal and just type git diff or git start or something. And you can also see the diff here at the bottom. If you type HP, leader HP, you can see that I, this is the git diff and I can see I added that line. All right, so that's all I have. Uh, I hope this video inspires you to improve your Bing config or gives you ideas of what plugins you can use. Uh, thanks for watching and I see you on the next one. Bye.